Well, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for this online session with Rambutin and special guest, uh, Andy Alexander. Um, but before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Marlene Hernandez, and I am the office manager here at Resource YYC. We are a co-working space for professionals. So if you're looking for a private office to work for the day or on a monthly basis, well, just let me tell you that this is the right place for you. We also provide a uh, virtual office service services in case that you don't want to use your home address for your business. Um, I'll be sharing the link to our website uh, in the chat so then you guys can find out more information about us. Um, but before we start, please be aware that this session will be recorded uh, for you and all of our members to watch later on our website. Well, with that being said, it is time to start with the session. Rambatin is one of the co-founders here of Resource by YC, but I will let him to introduce himself. So, Ron. Thanks, Marlene. And, and I will say one of the reasons everybody comes to Resource YYC is Marlene is great. And she's perfectly coordinated with the Christmas tree behind her today. So very nice. Um, <laughs> I just have to coordinate with this Resource YYC background. Um, so yeah, so I'm Ron Batia. I'm one of the co-founders at Resource YYC. We, uh, our company was started actually as a co-working space for entrepreneurial professionals, as Marlene said. And, uh, you know, we, as well as having people here and virtual members, we really, in, we really um, uh, work on and really support collaboration and, um, and, and really networking and really getting uh, uh, professionals and consultants and entrepreneurs, uh, people in Calgary to connect and support them. So uh, thanks for joining our community. Um, today we're talking with uh, Angie Alexander, who's a consultant. And uh, you know, we really want to build a consulting community in Calgary. I'm gonna find a space to share some of the experiences and journey of consultants and really broaden the awareness in Calgary of uh, what some of the consultants can do for uh, you and your organization. So, so welcome here today, Angie. Hi there, Ron, nice to see you. Glad Thanks you for did. having me. I'm excited for our conversation today. <laughs> oh, it's great. And we chatted a bit ahead of time and I'm really looking forward to it. So I'll just, maybe I'll do a little bio uh, on you and then we'll actually talk, get in a little deeper, deeper about yourself as well. So you're the president of uh, Senior Strategy and Leadership Consultant at Angie and Vance Consulting and Coaching. Uh, you you're actually started your career as a professional engineer and spent 20 years in Calgary oil and gas sector. Um, you're also an empathetic, um, empathetic, empathetic, sorry, uh, it's going to be one of these podcasts, I can tell, um, engineer who in the last few years has found your calling in leadership coaching, team effectiveness, and generally helping professionals be better versions of themselves. Uh, during the months of pandemics, uh, you really, you discovered positive intelligence, and you're here today to share some of your learnings and, and how you're actually helping other professionals and people um, with, uh, develop their skills um, uh, around positive intelligence. So, so with that, so, so Tell me a bit about yourself. So you're you're from Calgary. Are you Calgarian? I am. Yeah, I was uh, born and raised here in Calgary and um, thought I wanted to get away from the oil and gas business. So I, I went to university uh, in Montreal yeah. and then lo and behold, I ended up back back here, drawn back to our mountains, of course, and uh, the oil and gas industry at the time. Uh, wasn't great in the early 90s, but it also the manufacturing business out east also wasn't great. So I was fortunate enough to know some people that knew some people that uh, handed my resume back in the day when it was paper copies handed my resume over to somebody. And um, so, yeah, so began my oil and gas journey here. So it's, so it's lucky for us that you have roots in Calgary um, and and the mountains. I just maybe tell a little side you, you spent quite a bit of time in the mountains as well. Yeah, not as much these days as as I would like, but um, I grew up ski racing uh, when I was younger, and uh, my dad was a ski patroller at Lake Louise for a lot of years, and we used to um, trundle up to the mountains in the big old motorhome and stay uh, stay in the Lake Louise parking lot for or at the gondola base for a lot of years. So that's actually how I know Bill Scott because he and I used to uh, ski patrol together. Uh, mm. After I came back from university, I ski patrolled for. Uh, almost 10 years uh, as well. So spent lots of time in the mountains, but lately not so much. You know, the kids are grown up and got out of skiing and into uh, swimming pool type related activities. So the mountains I can see from my window and we get out and hike when we can, but uh, not as much as one would like, I think. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and I mean, Calgary's great for that. And 
it's funny because even if you can see it from your window, that's comforting. Because as soon as you get far away from it, you can't see them, it seems odd too far yeah. away. <laughs> true. So true. yeah, Calgary's a great place. I mean, I, I think I don't know, we may have some people not from Calgary, but it's one of the appeals of Calgary is it's got a lifestyle that's that's hard to beat. So uh Absolutely. glad you're here and uh and uh and just you mentioned Bill Scott. Bill Scott's one of the co-founders of Resource YYC as well. Um mm -hmm. so the two of us started a few years ago and, and Calgary is a city of one or two degrees of separation, it seems. Yeah. As as we discover as we discover as we talk more the number of people that we <laughs> that Absolutely. we know. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, and you know, and, and that is one of the one of the reasons we're doing this podcast actually because uh, you know a lot of people are doing consulting. And it turns out to be one or two degrees separation. So so the ability to actually build that community is helpful in Calgary and for consultants as well. So so thanks for joining us. And and you started out your career as an engineer. Yeah. Tell me yeah. a bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I um. Like I said, I, I, I got um, wanted to get away from oil and gas, but found uh, engineering was a, a, a good choice for me. Um, although in hindsight, maybe I didn't spend as much time thinking about it as I as I could have. I had the grades for it and everyone's like, you want to be an engineer? Sure, why not? Why not? Right. And you can get into a good university. Why wouldn't you do that? Um, but I loved I mean, I loved going to engineering school. There's no doubt about it. I loved the collaborativeness of that. Um, and I was fortunate enough to land with a, a really close group of women engineers, and there weren't many of us, but a group of women uh, that, I, that I was able to lean on throughout my engineering degree. And then when I came back here, I, um, yeah, I think I was telling you when we talked before, I, I started off and I, I mean, I'm smart enough to do all kinds of technical roles. Um, but I, I, you know, after a couple of years of doing any one thing, I, I think I got a little bored. Um, and I would move on to something else and I move on to something else. And, um, and I, I soon became that person that uh, I think I drove a lot of my engineering peers crazy because I asked questions all the time. I, um, you know, I was always, um, I realized now a lot of it came from my own insecurity, my, my own, maybe mm -hmm. my imposter syndrome around, I'm not smart enough to, to be here. There's no way I can know the answer to this by myself. I better ask people around me who are smarter than me. Um, but with the benefit of hindsight, I realized that's actually not a bad thing <laughs> to, you know, encourage, you know, other people's opinions and other perspectives and making sure you have lots of information. But at the time it was being driven from a, a more negative place with my mental mm -hmm. fitness training. Now I see it as a, an, an inner critic judge kind of thing that was driving that. But in the end, it was it was not a bad, not a bad thing. Yeah, I'm curious because I think actually there'll be a few things you said that people can relate to. One is a bit of that imposter syndrome, right? And I think that's everybody goes through a bit of that at some point in the career. Yeah. Um, and 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 what's interesting is if you don't talk to anybody about it or know, then you think it's just you. Correct. Right? Um, yeah. So this is your problem you have to deal with, and uh, and it may turn out that that a whole lot of people are doing similar things. So actually, I appreciate you even just speaking to it because at some point someone may be listening to this or or some of the. Uh, you know some of the communications you have people realize that hey you're not alone on this so so how did that um um th th at the time and i know we'll get into a little more but but looking back um if if you were if you were angie again in that place uh how would you have dealt with that a little differently yeah it's a, it's a great question and i i have an article written on linkedin that i that's called what i would tell my 20 20 something year old self so it, it addresses a little bit of that that question around um, acknowledging what what's going on, um, but for me, I, you know, I think imposter syndrome is, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. That it's unfortunate because the words are bad. Imposter sounds mm -hmm. bad. Syndrome sounds bad. There's and there's a great article out there on uh, uh, about that. But I think I'm realizing now that it's a bit of a growth edge, right? If you're if you're uncomfortable, you're learning something. Um, and when we're brand new in our career, of course, we're in a huge uh, place of learning. And there's this expectation we put on ourselves that we're supposed to know everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have, a, I have an engineering degree. I'm really smart. I've been hired to do this job. Um, I must be able to do it and not ask questions. And I, a couple of times in my early in my career, I remember, a, I remember an older operator type saying to me one time, that he loved that there were more women coming into engineering because we ask questions. Mm -hmm. We're willing to say we don't know um, versus some of the younger men that he had, um, had he, he'd 
encountered along the way. So I think just looking back on that and to your point saying it's normal to not know everything and it's actually, um, it doesn't matter how far you get in your career. I think as we get older, the more we know we don't know and uh, the more we get comfortable with that and that desire and love of learning more. I, I love learning from other people. I love hearing what other people know and um, the skill set to be able to listen to what other people um, what other people know and their perspectives on the same situation. Um, I've realized now looking back is, is kind of a superpower that I have to be able to tie that all together and then package it up and present it back in a way that brings everyone's perspectives together in a way that sometimes they hadn't even realized was was uh happening <laughs> so so that superpower you had was so non-technical oh yeah. <laughs> yeah so so here yeah. you're an engineer doing a technical job discovering that you're actually doing the favorite things you do are non-technical they're people engineering right so right yeah. so so and that was the second part of this so this whole idea of transition um so there will be a lot of people familiar in, to that in Calgary, right? Some some in transition by choice, many in transition not by choice. Um, but you, uh, um, and we will get to your consulting in a bit. Sure, <laughs> but, yeah. But that whole, I, I'm curious, that whole journey of transition to where you are now, um, how, how did, you know, looking back on that back end on that experience, was there any uh, learnings or highs and lows in that there and specifically, if there's people that are kind of going through that same journey, uh, you know, what what would be your uh, comments or thoughts around that whole transition process? Especially, especially, it sounds like you were really exploring. Actually, what, I'm an engineer, but I don't actually want to be an engineer, so you had to explore yeah. that as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, looking back, I think I, you know, you said sometimes it's by choice, sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly had a a point where it was not my choice to to transition, but before that, in the years leading up to that. Um, I, I think I was always exploring a little bit of that, um, that piece that was more people centric than not. Um, but because of my technical training and the way that I think and the way I was trained to think as an engineer, um, I could in, in, engage with technical people <laughs> and people them, right? People engineer them. I, like, I think that's what you said. <laughs> um, and so I, I always found myself um, being attracted to or drawn to positions mm -hmm. that really allowed for me to do that. And early in my career, I was put as like a project engineer with a bunch of grumpy older engineers who didn't know how to engage with a client. Um, you know, so I was able to pull them That's together. Not just, a, not just a stereotype, is it? Not at all. No, <laughs> <laughs> not less so now, maybe, but yeah, definitely <laughs> like these, you know, technical engineers who were, yeah, just didn't know how to engage with yeah. the client. And so I was, at, at a very early age did that. Um, but then I fell into roles that didn't even exist until they were created, maybe not for me specifically, but they'd be created and I'd be like, I wanna do that. And my engineering peers would be like, that's nuts. What a waste of your <laughs> brilliant technical engineering background. But realizing that it was the ability to help teams work better. That was what I brought to a team was, yeah, okay, I, I can do the technical work. I understand it but how do we use the technical work? How do we make decisions? How do we communicate to senior leaders that we want to, we have a project because it doesn't matter how good your project or your idea is if you can't communicate it and present it in a way that decision makers understand it, then why, then, then why bother? So I, I kind of became that person who was able to pull it all together for people, help present, help, you know, do the slides, take the, again, the typical engineering slide has like 4,000 words on it and try and get it down to like a picture and the, the key bullet points. And, you know, you don't have to show all your work. We had to do that in university. We don't have to do that now. Right. So, so, um, so it may have, may have turned yeah. out, I mean, you know, a lot of people who were trained in those, you know, HR and soft skills um, are surrounded by a lot of people like that um, and have a real tough time with technical people because because that's a big leap. So, so in a way, it's quite an advantage you actually come through there because because you can directly relate to those some of those tough, probably old engineers, right? Um, yeah. And and have that probably credibility as well, right? So correct. Yeah. For for me, it's a combination of uh, you know, I, and I've seen it over and over again when I've come into a team and they think, oh, here comes because my last corporate position was in HR, 
in organizational effectiveness. And, you know, here comes someone from HR. Um, and, you know, nothing, obviously nothing against HR professionals there. I've learned so much from working with them, but that credibility from a group of technical people, um, just even if they see the ring or they, I give them that en enough of a, a hint of what I used to do, but then ultimately being able to understand them and ask questions in a way that, that prods through the technical speak and the jargon and help them solve their problems. Cause that's, you know, that's what I love to do is, is help teams solve problems. So, yeah. That's excellent. And then, so tell us a bit more of that journey. So you, you're switching now, now within engineering and technical groups, you're now helping with the people side and then you jump yeah. right into the, the people side of it uh, along the way. And actually at one point you made a, before you became a consultant, you started to make a career of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so when I, so I worked for a, a, a big corporate oil and gas company mm -hmm. and I had, um, you know, yeah, I was slowly moving towards people stuff. Um, yeah. So I was, um, you know, we created planning systems and how to, you know, helping teams do that bigger sort of strategic planning. Um, we built out different um, uh, processes around that. So taking that sort of process approach, but it's how people make decisions. What are the conversations that they need to have? So, so really like putting up a roadmap to the, to what conversations needed to happen when, and then how to act and then facilitating those conversations. So have the right conversation at the right time with the right people, um, but also have, you know, have it kind of framed up in terms of how to, how to have that conversation. And then I got moved into that organizational effectiveness space, um, which is typically in HR. And that really became, well, I think I said to you, I felt like I won the lottery when I got that role um, mm -hmm. because I was working with senior leaders, many of them at that point who I'd known for a long time. Um, they listened to me when I told them how to be with their team and how to be with each other. So that was that leadership coaching that was starting mm -hmm. to come out. Um, and then working with them and their teams to set their strategy in terms of what's their long-term vision, um, helping them helping them with that. So once I experienced that, it really felt like, okay, this is finally everything's coming together. This is what I'm meant to do. And nothing makes me happier than watching a, that, that team dynamic shift as you engage with them and see, okay, like now they're making better decisions. They're engaging with each other better. They're more creative, they're more innovative because they trust each other and they're speaking more of a common language. So, yeah. So the journey is interesting because most, you know, a lot of people ask, well, how do you become a consultant? Yeah. And, and a lot okay. of how you become a consultant is exactly the journey you just said, right? You have to have a, you know, a good management consultants usually have a, have a life history that leads them up to a point where now they become a kind of a, they, you know, you are a generalist in a lot of ways, but you are now a subject matter expert as well. And you actually now, now you've really, um, um, taking a leap because you've actually really started focusing on positive intelligence, mm -hmm. right? And which is cool because I think there's a few things you're doing that are quite unique. So you take all that background you have and applying some really cool uh, tools and techniques and learnings to it. So, so yeah. tell positive intelligence. What's, yeah. What is, what, what is the that? heck is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So last year during the pandemic, um, I, like, um, it's, you know, so, you know, when things just kind of fall into your lap. So this opportunity to do a six week program mm -hmm. um, fell into my lap and it was, you know, offered to coaches. And, you know, at that point I was kind of calling myself a coach, kind of calling myself a management mm -hmm. consultant, not really sure. Um, but I was able to qualify to do this, this program. And it was called positive intelligence. So there's a guy named Shirzad Shamin, and he wrote a book called positive intelligence right here. Yeah, um, and it's great. I, I, I highly recommend it. But what positive intelligence is, is it's a it's it's a way to build your mental fitness. So the it's the focus is on building our mental fitness, which uh, the definition of that is our ability to handle life's challenges with a positive versus a, a negative mindset. So everything that comes at us, we you know, we get to choose how we respond to it. And um, if we can, if we can work our way into responding in a more positive way, and this doesn't mean that a lot of times I've had people say, oh yeah, everything has to be all positive, positive when Angie's around. No, 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 no. Like that's not, that's not what it's about. I mean, there is absolutely putting that positive slant on it, but it's recognizing what's causing the negative 
emotions. And so to build our mental fitness and what we learn with uh, positive intelligence, so it's the framework that we use for, for uh, mental fitness. So we're building, so we've all heard of emotional intelligence. That's a, a, big, a big thing. And emotional intelligence quotient is EQ. So positive intelligence quotient is PQ. So that's what we're building. We're building our muscles around positive intelligence. And if we build our positive intelligence muscles, we build emotional intelligence as well. It's kind of a fallout um, side benefit of all of that. Um, so we build three core muscles. And um, one of them is we call saboteur uh, interceptor. So a saboteur is those voices we hear in our head that tell us that you know we're not good enough or I need to control the situation and drive everybody crazy because I have to be in control. Um, I have to be a people pleaser. There's a, a litany, the little cast of characters of, of saboteurs that we all have. And they show up a little differently for each of us, but learning about that. And that's the first muscle is just knowing and recognizing that this is happening. And then we want to shift into what we call sage. The sage brain is that positive side of our brain that allows us to be empathetic and creative and curious and really laser focused in our action and, and have that purpose of life and, and, and really driven that way. And, and whether it's as an individual or as a leader, um, having all of those powers makes us more sage. Um, that's the second muscle. And then the third one is how do you shift from one to the next? And that's really for me when I did this uh, mental fitness work, I didn't do it with any intention of other than just personal growth, but it was like earth shattering for me when I went through this program and I saw the shift in my own outlook and the way that I dealt with things. And it's, we, we just did before we came on the podcast here, I, I demonstrated a couple of, they're just small little micro moments, but what you're doing is you're shifting the neural pathways in your brain. You're rewiring to be able to get out of that negative saboteur voice and into the, into the sage side, because I don't know about you, but, um, I've read lots of books. I've listened to podcasts. I've, you know, all of these things. And I've got put stickies up on my mirror to say, you are awesome. Even though that other voice is telling me you're not, it wasn't enough. I needed to actually rewire my brain to be able to get to that part of my, part of my brain. So those are the three muscles that we learned about in positive intelligence. And I loved it so much that I thought this is like this, I need to bring this well, to everybody, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's that whole, like everybody needs to do this, but it, I, I was, I see it for individuals. I see it for teams. Um, you know, the, the, the folks I've been able, I, I, I'm, I signed up, I'm like, sign me up. I need to learn how to do this for other people. Um, and I'm certified now as a, as a positive intelligence, mental fitness coach. Um, and so I can bring that to my clients and uh, to the world, really, because that's the vision that Shirzad has is to is to make us well, and, all mentally fit. And you're doing a few things. So you're you're coaching, mm -hmm. um, but you are uh, um, I'm trying to remember you you actually have a uh, uh, channel. What's it on again? Um, on Clubhouse. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> so you're doing more than just coaching. You're actually once a week. You're very very deliberate about. Uh, of sage leadership so yeah and and yeah. and really connecting with people um and i think you're just doing that that's a volunteer thing you do once a week as well right so tell us a yeah. bit about that then we'll get a yeah. little more into i got like a whole bunch of questions but maybe just talk yeah, a bit sure. about what that is yeah so clubhouse um clubhouse is a social audio app so you get it on your phone it's an app and it's an audio only so when you when you jump into it you're just listening um mm -hmm. and it's, it's an amazing way to connect with people um, because you show up and you're there and you get to listen to people and you get to talk to people. Um, I, I won't go into a whole clubhouse tutorial, but um, I'm, there's different clubs. It's kind of like being in a virtual conference room, conference okay. center, right? You walk down the hall, you can see on the, on the door, you can see what the talk is about, what the, mm. the topic is. You can see who's leading the conversation and you might be able to kind of peek in the window and see who's in the room. And if you choose to go in, you, you come into the audience and you can listen to what's going on um, on the virtual stage. You can choose to put up your hand and, and if you get invited up on stage, then you can actually talk to the others on the stage um, or you can just listen. Um, if it's not interesting, you can just sneak out the back door and carry on down the hallway. Um, so I, I do, I've taken the opportunity to 
um, there's a couple different things that I do on Clubhouse, but the one main one that you're talking about is every Thursday, I have a room, they're called rooms on uh, mental fitness and sage leadership. And so we talk for an hour about different topics and we never quite know how it's going to go because it depends on who joins us and who comes up on stage and, and the, the type of conversation that we have. But, you know, it's been really amazing for me because it, the practice of saying things out loud, yeah. answering questions live for people, um, it's really started to evolve for me what's important and what it is that, that I really want to to, to talk about. So when I first started out, we weren't talking about sage leadership that's evolved over the last few months. And, yeah. and then we started talking about mental fitness and, and really the very specific positive intelligence stuff. And then we started shifting to, well, what does that mean to be a leader um, with, you know, with a sage perspective, what does, and then, oh, I, you know, what is, is like, if you're a leader who's done the positive intelligence work and in demonstrating the sage powers, what does that look like? Oh, well, you're a sage leader, right? So it's kind of just evolved over time. And it's such a great platform to be able to just practice and shift and adjust. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm starting now to connect with people uh, and, in, and, in that way. And it's called sage leadership. Um, so just before we get off there to find it, uh, you just go to Clubhouse and look for Sage Leadership um, at 11 on, is it 11 o'clock on? It's uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, 10 a. so 8, 8 a.m. Mountain Time. Mm, yeah. So <laughs> On Thursday. Yeah, so so yeah. Uh, that'd be a great place. And then, and then you uh, you find people join in. So now you would have to describe Sage Leadership. Um, yeah. Probably yeah. over and over again. Um, yeah. You find, yeah. Uh, and it's interesting, kind of as a consultant and as a, uh, as a certified coach, you find your definition and how you ex how you describe sage leadership has been changing or evolving. Um, oh yeah. yeah, every time I describe it, it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm curious. So, yeah. so you've been consulting now on. I mean, consulting for a while, but on sage leadership and positive intelligence uh, for for a year now. Um, yeah. How yeah. you found you've changed as a person and as a consultant over this year? Yeah, such it's a great question, and and because. You know, I, I would have always said I'm a positive person. Anyone who's yeah. known me for any length of time would say, oh, yeah, I'm a super positive person. And I am. And I'm very empathetic. Um, you know, yeah. I, I've, I've always I've always been that way. I'm very good with people. Um, what this program initially like it's very it's it's very much about doing the work for yourself. Yeah. So it's digging in and understanding yourself before you can even go in and engage with other people around it. Um, I discovered just how hard I am on myself. Right. I have this judge that just berates me on a fairly continuous loop and which we all, we all do, you know, we, we all have some version of that, of that voice. Mm -hmm. So it helped me recognize that voice um, and then build those muscles to have the confidence to step into what I really want to do. And um, because I think again, it's that the voice of the judge or, you know, whatever those versions are that I'm not, good enough to do this yeah. who's really going to want to listen to me right eh, you know like i i'm not good at selling um i'm not good i have like you know i have these really good conversations with people but nobody really wants to hire me why this wh who would want to hire me for something that's so easy and obvious to do like facilitating or coaching yeah. it's you know it's really given me that um ability to to be more um discerning mm -hmm. with myself and also step into those powers that I that I do have, and I can actually say, without, you know, without the judge saying no, you're not to to actually say, I am smart and I am awesome and I am very capable of this. And before I would have said that, but it would have been like, yeah, but like there was just this twitch that came with it, right? I I didn't quite believe it, yeah. and now I do, and I make no apologies for it, and yeah. and so all of that has come from, from that. But I can also tell little stories about just day-to-day -day stuff around, you know, we've been locked down with the family. I have teenage daughters um, and my husband for 20 months now. And, and I look at how I'm the only one of the four of us who's done this work. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's super contagious. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've noticed how we all engage with each other has changed. Um, and that's coming from the work that I'm doing and my reaction to things I'm not allowing 
my saboteurs to be out there engaging with their saboteurs as much. It's not 100% and it never will be, but I respond more quickly to it. Um, you know, my mental muscles are stronger now and I can, and I, and I just don't let those kinds of things get to me as much as they, yeah. as they did before. So, so yeah. how did that translate now, now in a coaching uh, engagement? So how do you mm -hmm. take all that and translate it into a coaching engagement? What's, what, what's that look like? Uh, and well, first of all, how do you engage uh, some of your clients and, and how do you connect? Yeah. Um, and then how, then what does a coaching engagement look like? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I, I mean, I've always connected with people naturally. That's one of my, you know, I, I'm, I'm just naturally connect with people easily. The difference now is that um, I've, and, and we talk about this over and over again in the coaching community, is that we have to learn how to get out of our own way when we're coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same with consulting, right? It's the, yeah. you know, if you're up there working with people, um, we often know the answer already. We can see it, what people need, whether you're providing technical services or otherwise, but you need to dial down your own voices yeah. and listen and meet your client where they are. And so whether that's, again, any consulting engagement that you do is like that. So I'm much more able to listen really empathetically, be very curious and, mm -hmm. and draw them out. Um, and really get that sense of, okay, well, what's getting in their way of moving forward successfully? What's, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, women that I've been working with lately, um, and this is some of my own experiences, well, what, like you, you're successful, mm -hmm. quote unquote, um, but are you happy? And what makes you happy? And how do we, how do we work our, our way through that? And going through the, the mental fitness boot camp before having that conversation, I, cause I've taken, I've, I've taken several women through a conversation around success versus happiness. Mm -hmm. And I've taken some now after they've done the boot camp, and it's a completely different conversation. It's a much faster conversation, um, to kind of get through this. Okay. Yeah, no, it's what, what makes me happy and success comes after that. So what's it, tell me about the boot camp. What's the boot camp? The boot camp. Yes. Um, so, um, you know how, if you wanted to get physically fit, you were yeah. say training for a marathon or wanted mm -hmm. to do something like that. Oftentimes we do a boot camp, right? It kind of kickstarts the, the habit building and, and gets the, you know, gets the sweat going and the muscles going, um, <clears throat> mental fitness is the same. You, you need to do the work. You need to set the routines. You need to get the practice. So, um, so part of the mental fitness, um, positive intelligence work that I offer is a six week well, seven weeks, depends on how you, how you count it, but it's six, it's six weeks of actual work. You might have seven weeks of with the, anyways, doesn't matter. Six weeks of mental muscle building over, um, over yeah. the six weeks. So you learn about your saboteurs. Um, you learn about the sage and you do lots of practice reps on a daily basis to build that routine. So it, and then it sets you up for, for a, that sort of lifelong journey, just like physical fitness. You can't do a six week boot camp and then think you're going to be fit for the rest of your life, right? It's a continuous um, program. So is that a group program or do you do it as an individual basis? Yeah, both and or. Yeah. Um, it's designed to have um, groups come together in pods. And so I've done uh, several of them where I've just brought four to six people together yeah. who may not know each other. And then you do the individual work and you come together once a week to, to talk about it. There is also, um, it's the, we can do PQ for teams, but it always starts with the six weeks of individual work. And then you step into, we now have all tamed our saboteurs. We know how to be in our sage. Now, how do we work together as a team with this common language and um, build up those, those pillars that we know are, that make healthy teams, right? So, so what's the difference? Um, I'm curious, the difference uh, between coaching a team through this exercise versus an individual and, and team it sounds like a lot little more corporate oriented yeah um, approach there yeah. yeah yeah so the the first part that first six weeks mm -hmm. is it's the same I, really I, because we all have to do the individual work first um, you know the difference when you go through it as a team is well first of all you you, you know each other so there's a little bit more um, on my end to manage that in the in the pod meetings just to make sure that we're all um you know focused on ourselves first 
with these broader team goals in mind, but let's, it's like an operating system you have to install in everybody first, right? We have to install the operating system and then we can, um, and then we can carry on and have those conversations um, as, a, as a team. And it's no different if you go through as an individual and then you have goals and things that you want to improve moving forward, the operating system gets installed. It's the foundation of any of the other work that you want to do with a team. You've just gone through that together. You've had that experience of uncovering and recognizing, hey, you, you don't you have a judge that's telling you bad things, too. Um, it's amazing, actually, to see how people all of a sudden realize that, you know, and they start to see it in each other um, a, a lot, a lot differently. You, you so. find uh, just some of the work and I know you're just getting early into your consulting career on this, but yeah. are you uh, drawn or, or, or pulled into technical teams, uh, people with your background? You know, it's interesting because when I first started this, part of the part of the certification process was we had to define our niche. Yeah. Um, and at that point, I was very much my niche was, I mean, and I'm still very beholden to this, this niche, but would be technical women mm -hmm. uh, who are in that, you know, redefining what success and happiness look like for them. That was my niche market and very much focused on one on one coaching. So I've done that a lot in the last little while I've worked with a lot of, of women a lot of groups bring them together and I love it and I certainly on the scale of of you know love really love really really love I love working one-on-one -on -one with people mm -hmm. I really love working when they're in a group sort of that group coaching environment and I really really love and I'm really missing working with technical teams mm -hmm. right so take that group dynamic and layer in um, some technical challenges and technical speak um, because so clearly that's where my roots are in terms of of seeing and, and seeing um, that i think i know the answer to this but but how prevalent is this in organization uh, either you know and, and especially calgary now is growing in the tech world and you know there is traditional energy but it's growing yeah. in renewables and tech so how prevalent would any of this be in those industries right now the issues that need solving or the yeah, actual or the whole yeah. positive intelligence right yeah, so far it's not very prevalent. Yeah. I mean, I think there's an, uh, a, a groundswell that's happening around, yeah. we're seeing the importance of emotional intelligence and that, yeah. you know, that that's a key leadership skill. And if you build your positive intelligence, your emotional intelligence comes along for the ride. It's, it's definitely there as well, right? It's all about building empathy. Um, so right now, you know, I, I certainly have struggled myself and thought like, who's gonna like these, yeah. this kind of traditional, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to say, you know, the older kind yeah. of old boys club feeling that we often get from our senior leaders, are they really going to be open to something like this? And mm -hmm. I've struggled with that, right? So again, that's my, is that my judge saying that? Or am I being mm -hmm. actually discerning about it? And I've realized that um, it, it's not going to be everybody, but there mm -hmm. are, there are, there are windows that open in that. And I have a pretty extensive network of senior leaders that I've worked with over the years. And back to credibility, they listen to me, right? They listen to what I have to say. I can speak to the experience that they've had and what have I what I've experienced through all of this. And I can lay out there's a better way. Your teams are much more productive. They're much, they're they're going to be higher performing if you are a positive team. So that's the, you know, like you want performance, you have to be more productive. You want more productivity, you have to have more positivity. You need you need that positive intelligence uh, in the in the team. So, yeah. You know, it's your um, so consulting in general and really any entrepreneur, you know, what problem are you solving? Yeah. Um, so yeah. so it sounds like the problems there, but sometimes the people don't even know they have a problem that needs solving. That's right. So how do you raise awareness? And I think we've talked about some of this stuff, but but there's clearly a huge opportunity, you know, in Calgary and beyond. How, how do you get people to recognize that positive intelligence is something that, you know, I don't want to say a problem, it's an opportunity, really. A lot of them yeah. could be better yeah. by understanding that. So, and, and it's a, it's, you're, you're in a way becoming a bit of a thought leader on that, but, but how do you, how do you get that out there? How do you market that as, yeah, a, it's a, as, as it, something that uh, people should desire for their companies? It's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, for me, it, it is, it's ultimately about performance. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you're speaking to leaders, um, it's how, how do your teams perform if they trusted each other more, if mm -hmm. they 
um, understood and were driven by the purpose and the mean and the vision, um, if they really were tied into that, um, if they were accountable to each other, mm -hmm. all of that comes from, uh, you know, if you think about, we, I mean, we've all been in a room where, um, you know, once you kind of get a feel for what the saboteurs look like, it's any of that negative energy that's happening. We've all been in rooms like that, right? We've all mm -hmm. been in meeting rooms where, you know, the saboteurs are just like, if you can kind of picture it, they're like, ah, right. They're out <laughs> there having their, their, their fight. And if, and then we've also probably, hopefully all experienced that team where everybody is connected, they're driven, um, they're, they're enjoying each other. They're supporting each other. They, they, it's, we want to win as a team and we want to work together as a team. And when we felt that we're creative and we're, you know, we're really just so excited about the possibilities that we can have as a team. Now, as a leader, how much more, more better, <laughs> how much, how much better would that be for your team? How much more productive and, and how much performance would, would be improved if you had that environment with your team versus the, the stress that we're, we're kind of feeling these days, right? Yeah. Um, everybody's, you know, they're, 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 and they're all bringing it back with them, whether they're coming back to the office, we've all changed over the last couple of years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how do we, how do we really create that space? And I, so there, I mean, there's tons of data out there that says that teams that are, you know, like supportive of each other are more productive and leaders who are more empathetic are better. And it's really just, getting leaders to think about like, what are you, how much energy are you wasting when there's that much stress and anxiety? If you could just dial that back by 10 or 15%, what would your productivity look like? You know, and, and you're coming from an engineering background. I mean, there, um, it's a, it's a cost benefit thing, right? So the yeah. cost of not doing it, um, Correct. you know, it, it's far, it, it's far away. If you get the benefit of that, you have to keep working together. It, it turns out there's actually a tangible, tangible dollar you can attribute. Um, yeah. I mean, it's always hard to say, I, I saved you this much money, but I think it actually has to be the way people think about their teams. Yeah. Um, because it becomes pretty apparent in a, an organization when they're wasting money because teams aren't productive, right? That's or they're right. not meeting the goals of the organization. They're not meeting deadlines. And, and it turns out, um, you know, a lot of the consulting I do, uh, there is no magic a lot of times it's about how to get team perform how to be accountability and yeah. in this case how to be sage you yeah know, positive intelligence and, yeah. and be sage leaders right so yeah totally so that, yeah, yeah that's cool i'm gonna i'm gonna come just go into a little more of the consulting world there yeah. um we always you know we we really like to be a bit of a community that shares some best practices around consulting as well so so first of all what what, what do you like best about being a consultant yeah, I, you know, I love um, that I get to work with who I want to work with, yeah. right? Um, I'm doing, and you know, there's always stuff that you have to do that you you don't love as much, but um, I I get to choose. It's it's something that I've, you know, the the passion behind what I want to do is is that. And I mean, as much as I may be a little tired of being at home in the office because of the last couple of years of, of the pandemic, but I I do really love working from home. Um, you know, I love being able to go and meet people for coffee and have those conversations and, and work with them in that, in that respect. And, you know, what's the other interesting thing for me has happened with being a consultant. When I first uh, was transitioned out, um, I thought I would miss being part of a team. I always thought of myself as, you know, a team player. And what I've realized is that I love working with teams, but I don't have to be part of a team. It's That's actually, it's actually like, a lot of the drama goes away oh, yeah. when you're not, like, you can facilitate the conversation and you can, and like, I'm much more comfortable stepping into the conflict that a team mm -hmm. is having. If I'm not part of the conflict, <laughs> you, know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> you can, so, you can help yeah. people be successful in performance reviews, but you don't have to give the performance review. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and it's so, okay. So what's the, so what's the worst part about consulting? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it never, you never really get a break, yeah. right? Like it's, you know, my husband's noticed that he's like, sometimes you're on calls at night. Um, it's hard to give yourself a break. Mm -hmm. Um, you feel like it's 24 seven sometimes. Um, especially if you don't have like a steady flow, yeah. the pipeline isn't full. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably been the hardest part. A little bit of the, 
the middle of the night worrying sometimes about um, yeah. are we going to be able to pay the mortgage this month? I'm not so sure. <laughs> it's a combination yeah. between how do you spend money and how do you market for the least cost so that you can make money so you can pay money for marketing and be yeah. successful, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. Well, you know, and, and I think everybody knows that once you get in and kind of word of mouth, that's actually one of the best marketing things. So yeah, referrals so, for sure. Uh, you, yeah. you can get a few good clients, um, get word of mouth. And, and actually, I, I appreciate you coming on today because it's also an opportunity uh, for us to share a bit about what you do, yeah. um, but also learn, uh, you know, learn, you know, people don't get exposed sometimes what consultants do and, and the life of a consultant. So I mean, yeah. any tips or just, just some of the nuts and bolts of being a consultant, any tools, tips, or tricks that you've learned that you go, and everybody should know this. And I wish someone would have told me. Yeah. Um, I'm still, I'm still figuring a lot of it out. I mean, I think, um, there's something to be said about, um, recognizing what you're not good at and, mm -hmm. and, um, hiring that out. I'm not necessarily uh, good at that right now, but also do your research around things like incorporating, um, yeah. taxes. Like we just, we just went through, um, a process of a friend of mine who I'm happy to refer if, if anybody's uh, interested. She walked us through our benefits and we uh, did you, this might be obvious to some of you, but putting your benefit package through your corporation, even though there's only two of us right now, my husband and I, um, you, you save a ton of money on your group benefits, just simply putting it through your corporation. So there you go. That's, that's the the one tip I wish I had uh, realized when I when I first and it it only became important once we incorporated and we didn't do that right away. So um, those those kinds of things, yeah. yeah. And reach out, like network with people. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And you know, it always feels like there's the obvious things that you should know, but if you don't know, then ask and get and get a coach. <laughs> like I, I've had a couple of coaches over the last couple of years, and um, it's been an amazing. Um, there's lots of good business coaches out there um, that can can really help push you outside your comfort zone a little bit, kind of encourage you in that in that direction and ask you the, the questions that you need to. But you need that's to interesting coming yeah. from a coach. Yeah, so, every coach needs a coach. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Good. Um, I am a couple more questions. I'm actually going to leave a few minutes for questions. A few people sure. that have uh, um, joined us for this. So. Um, First of all, are you, you part of any professional organization or networking that you um, that you're engaged in to try and keep yourself? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm an APEGA member, yeah. so um, I keep up that designation and the coaching community keeps me very engaged. And honestly, like Clubhouse is a great yeah. place to I'm more than happy if someone wants to reach out to explain a little bit more about how you can network on Clubhouse. Um, get out there. There's so many, there's millions sure. of people out there on Clubhouse. But other than that, yeah, I mean, like I come to your, all of, I try and come to your sessions yeah. and, you know, getting out there, but not, no specific advice on that. Okay. And uh, any, so you already showed us one book. Any yeah. must, must reads for someone either as a consultant or as uh, wants to know more about positive intelligence? Yeah. So definitely this one, the positive intelligence mm -hmm. book here, I'll hold it up again so you can see it positive intelligence. Um, the other one that I don't, do I have it here handy? Um, so Simon Sinek's infinite game and eaters, eaters lead us leaders eat last mm -hmm. is a good one. So I, I love Brené Brown, Simon Sinek. Yeah. Have been, have been go-tos for me from a leadership perspective for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Always good to get a good book tip. So yeah. Got a little list of all the ones I'm going to read. And actually, I started listening to more podcasts than I can because yeah. sometimes the books sit there. But if I can get them on our audio books, audio books, I can, I can be riding my bike or hiking or whatever. And and uh, sometimes it's good when the author, when you hear the author say the words. Exactly. I was just going to say actually, like it, it yeah. adds a different dimension. Like when you say Simon, uh, um, cynic. cynic. Yeah. I, I hear his voice actually more than the book sometimes. So, yes. Yeah. Good tip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got a few minutes, so we're open up for a couple questions. Okay. Um, if we have any, I don't know, Marlene, do we uh, have anyone that, are, that would have a question or any? In nothing chat? in the chat yet. Well, yeah, nothing in the chat, but yeah. I'm I've been sure. I've been watching Alejandro kind of grinning and smiling. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was like smiling at me or something else that was going on in his environment, but. <laughs> 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 yeah. Any questions? <laughs> 
Well, we got some thumbs up there. So there he goes. Yeah, he goes. Uh, yeah. I was listening. I was listening to you the whole time, smirking and like the twenty four seven thing. That's definitely. Uh, I I stay up twenty four seven, but like doing consulting, I think I speak with people all around the world, and they have different mm -hmm. times, like in Paris and stuff. So, and then I'm doing like cryptocurrency stuff, and and so wow. it's like okay, now the gas ether prices are low, so go buy. I don't know, like all these kind of diverse things have made the, the, and the different clients have like a sort of ongoing, not set schedule. So it's yeah. like, you finish with one, you go to the next, you finish the phone call, then the other one wants the coffee. And yeah. then after the coffee, it's the conference call. And then it kind of, in that sense, it's never ending. So, but, yeah. but at the same time, if you do what you love, it's kind of like you don't work. You, That's you know, right. Uh, it, so and I think that the, for me, the favorite thing in consulting is like, I don't, I'm not actually working. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm, I'm curious, do you, uh, have you heard about positive intelligence before? I had not, I had not. Yeah. And I was actually writing it down right now. And, and I'm definitely, and the, I read a lot of audiobooks. Um, and um, I, I don't know why I just want to say like Annie Jacobson for some reason, she has a lot of like really crazy books, but there she reads them herself and like, this tone and everything and it really is like a mesmerizing thing so like the author reading their own books is is a big thing so yeah i, I love that I'm, I'm and i guess the power of now is kind of another one more in 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 our and what we're talking about might might help somebody you know yeah it's a good one uh Eckhart Tolle, he also has like right. a yeah. very specific voice yeah so angie i'm curious because it sounds like uh Ale alexandro is a very busy guy got lots on the go so is there anything in the positive intelligence that you know so so probably people come at it from different perspective but you love what you're doing and you're busy all the time yeah. um I'm, I'm actually curious angie is there part of the positive intelligence that, that actually would um be a benefit to someone like uh alexandra yeah well i think um i actually have a, a client right now who's going through the boot camp with me who sounds a lot like a lot like alejandro in terms of <laughs> Um, busy working all the time and um, you know he's committed to the process and that um, you know when I asked him you know it's uh, often it's okay well like what do you what benefit are you looking for out of something like this if you you know it's usually relationships peace of mind or performance so um, and I, I'm going to put I just I'll put it in the chat here I just hit enter um, you can go and do the saboteur assessment for yourself to kind of see um, where the saboteurs Perfect. are. Um, but a lot of times it's driving you. I know for, for him, what he would say is he's just never allows himself to rest that he always feels he has to be doing something all the time, all the time, all the time. And that one of the saboteurs is called hyperachiever. So, and it's a, we're all, um, there's nothing wrong with being a high achiever, right? But when we're being driven by that machine that's constantly saying more and more and more, it's never enough, it's never enough. And we don't pause to um, really um, embrace and, and enjoy the moments that we have. We're, we're just jumping to the next, jumping to the next. So Alejandro, I don't know if you have children, but um, this other client of mine, he's like, I'm not as present for my kids as I, as I could be. I like, I, I, you know, I, I'm like, okay, like get them off for breakfast and then put them on the bus and then I run to my desk. So I'm not thinking about being present with them. I'm thinking about when can I get to my desk and what am I gonna be working on? What email do I have to send? So it's being able to slow down so that you can be in, in those moments and give yourself that, that time. So it's, what are the negative emotions that are potentially like that anxiety? Are you waking up in the night? Are you, you know, all of those things that you, you wouldn't, wouldn't wanna be. You still wanna be able to get your work done and enjoy what you're doing but what are those anxious moments that are often in, in the way of that? So that was some great, yeah. great advice. And uh, thanks for participating, Alejandro. Thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, Alrighty. We have, uh, yeah, actually we probably start, should start wrapping it up. Um, so, so first of all, before we forget, Angie, how do we get a hold of you? You had a website. LinkedIn. Yeah, I have, you know, this is another thing I learned that I went around and around about was you have to have a website. You don't have to have a website. I don't have a website. I have landing pages. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I, I have landing pages. LinkedIn is the absolute best way to find me. Um, I am on Instagram as well. You can find me there. I'm Sage Coach Angie on uh, Instagram. Um, this 
uh, I can pop my email address in here as well while we're talking. So yeah, that's all kind of the best. If anyone's interested in the boot camp, I have a landing page for that. Oh, um, so I'm happy to throw that in the chat and as well. we'll uh, and, and just for anyone who knows, we'll make sure, uh, Marlene, we'll make sure we put it on the post when we post the podcast. We'll have your contact information as well. Yeah, perfect. Um, and, uh, and then again, uh, Clubhouse on 8 a.m. Eastern time. No, um, 8 a.m. Mountain. Mountain time, sorry. <laughs> yes. 10 a.m. Eastern on Clubhouse and look for Sage Leadership. Yeah, or just look for me. Yeah, just you can find yeah, Angie Alexander. I'm. I think on Clubhouse, I'm Angie A Y Y C. Okay, perfect. Y Y C. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Good. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Angie. Any final things we didn't talk about that we should just uh, share before we close up? No, I think that was really good. I mean, I think this whole idea of uh, you know, like to embrace sage leadership. It's it's mm -hmm. not just for like we're all leaders, right? It doesn't matter where you are, or what you do, you're a leader, whether you're in your community, in your friend group, in your family, in your organization, you're a leader. And to be able to lead from this place of sage, um, I think is, is just, it, if we can all think about that more, um, that the world just will be a better place, right? If we can tune out the saboteurs and, and tune into our sage, um, overall, it's just, a, it'll be a better place. <laughs> And Calgary has so many technical people, so it's nice mm -hmm. to see a technical person that can bring uh, positive intelligence to uh, to the workplace. So thanks again for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ron. I love being here. Appreciate it yeah. so much. And I'll hand it off to Marlene to close it off today. Yeah, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Angie, Ron, thank you so much for all your insights. Um, and yeah, I just want to invite you all to check out our website for more events coming up. So on December um, 26th, we're going to have another session. Um, so yeah, we look forward to having you, all of you. So once again, thank you so much and hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, Marnie.